What is up my ninjas, I'm Strident and welcome to another vlog. Today, I am bringing to you something that I have been geeked about. Um, if you've noticed, my output has been a little bit slower. There has been a lot of facets to things that are going on. I, I am kind of involved in a bunch of things, but this is one of the things that I'm very geeked about because this is kind of a gateway to what I have always wanted to be doing with my time. Um, I recently joined a, well, this year I joined a team that is working on a new toy line that will be kind of a, a rest from what we see with Marvel and DC. I joined Invincible Toys. Um, and the, the story is really cool. It's kind of the way I typically get freelance work. You know, it's like base level networking. You, you talk to people online, you show them what you can do, and then they're like, hey, you want to be part of this? <laughs> And then, you know, next thing you know, you're working on something and, you know, it, it's it's fun. Uh, and it's uh, in this case, it's really fun and it's really eye opening because there's a lot of things that I am learning from this team. Um, a lot of stuff I know, which is, you know, what makes me a good fit for the team. But there's a lot of information that I am I'm getting from our team leader, uh, Landon. Now, one of the most awesome things about this um, project and working with Landon is that Landon shares the same kind of passion I have for action figures, which started when we were all really tiny. You know what I mean? The, with the first couple figures we've ever had. He moved around a lot, and in various places that he moved around to, um, you know, with his family, there's always going to be kids around, and these kids play with toys. And even if you don't speak the language, toys are universal. As long as you got them and you got the same ones, you guys can all vibe together. And from there, it was a wrap. Lifelong toy fan that doesn't just collect the toys, but can fix them when they break, can customize them to make them do things that they couldn't do before, or get the paint and the colors and things to look more like what we've seen on screen, the whole nine, which is amazing. Um, I became uh, cool with Landon based on uh, joining a uh, contest, and uh, I ended up running out of time and missing the deadline for that specific contest. I gave him the work though. I was like, you can keep this because you know I made this for you. Um, essentially it was a contest for us to create some uh, promo work for the line that we're just doing to help. You know what I mean? It, it, this is a small company at the time. It was a, a handful of people. I mean, we're still a handful of people, but you know, this isn't some giant company, you know, uh, not yet. And, uh, yeah, after the fact, I let him know. I was like, this is what I did for your, your contest. You can keep it, though, if you like it. You know, you can throw it away if you don't. And he dug it. This is the piece that I did. It was fun to do. It is of the Spartan, which I'm going to show you the toy uh, shortly because it is my favorite of the bunch, uh, probably next to the cowboy. Um, and it, it was fun because the reaction was, oh, shit, do you do comics? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an illustrator. I've been doing this for about 20 years now and he was like huh and we just started talking and talking and talking and sharing experience and the whole nine and next thing you know we are working on a toy line together now this is Landon's brainchild I'm bringing just you know my my ideas and and my uh, design I don't know aesthetics to you know aspects of the line right now but this particular line these particular things this is Landon all the way he paid for the the creation of the uh you know the models the uh advertising the prototypes i mean this is someone who did all this stuff out of their own pocket before ever getting a team together and even taking this stuff to kickstarter this is why i preach kickstarter should be for the small companies not for, or crowdfunding, I'm sorry, should be for smaller groups, smaller companies, LLCs, and not for billion dollar corporations. So here is an, a 100% abject lesson in that, or an abject example of that. So uh, again, we're Invincible Toys, and I'm going to show you the futuristic combat soldiers. Now the idea here was to get a kind of a swath of all the things we dig, you know what I mean? Uh, you've got a uh, plains warrior 
who's, you know, your Black Panther-esque African warrior, but he's still a soldier, you know, kind of like a Zulu. You've got your uh, samurai, which, you know, we've got tons of ninjas. Samurai kind of need more love. You've got a futuristic ninja. You've got your ranger, which is the base level. You know, all of us know the ranger. You know, Master Chief, you know, Beachhead and Stalker. You, you, you know the archetype. We've got our Spartan, our futuristic Spartan, which is who I did the image of. You know Leonidas. You know, you know, tons of other Spartans from other games and such. So you've got a, uh, you know, kind of a frame of reference for that. And then the cowboy. It's a futuristic cowboy who's walk roaming the deserts. You know, he's got his gas mask on to protect him from breathing in all the crazy. And, you know, you can, you can add these characters to whatever situation. And this is much like what us kids who didn't have a ton... This is what we did. You'd go to the dollar store, you'd find a figure, it would look cool, it would suit your fancy, you'd get it, and then you'd come up with the universe, or if you already have things in play, you plug that character into your universe, you know what I'm saying? So with this, you can do that. You can have these guys fighting uh, predators and aliens and stuff like that. You can have them teaming up with your Avengers. You can have them teaming up with your um, Spartans from uh, Halo. You can have them, you know, wherever, because the design aesthetics allow for them to kind of mix in with other lines that exist, you know? If, you, if you're only into G.I. Joe Classified, I'm sure you can find a place for the Cowboy, the Ranger, even the Samurai, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of up to you to let your imagination decide where you want to take these guys, you know, where you want to plug them in. All right, let's talk about the cowboy. Now the cowboy's dope. This is actually my favorite of the bunch, next to the uh, Spartan, and uh, he's got a very Brave Star kind of feel to him. I mean, shit. If you have the you know alternate heads and stuff and the paints ready, you would customize this to be a uh, um, a Marshall Brave Star, like an updated Marshall Brave Star in a more uh, post-apocalyptic kind of future. You know what I mean? Or post-apocalyptic space you know, opera or something. But he does have the vest, holster for his pistol. Um, the hat is really nice. I love the um, face mask as well. It's just a very, you know, you can tell he's coming from a very tough, kind of harsh world. You know what I mean? And easily you can make these things fit in. You can use that gas mask in so many different situations. Um, but, you know, the, the pistols are what do it for me because I love gunslingers, you know, that whole, uh, you know, vibe is just dope, you know what I'm saying? And it's something we don't see often, so uh, it's no surprise that he's one of the favorites so far. The Samurai. This guy's dope. Um, what I like about him is that he's a future samurai. It's more of a um, tactical samurai, you know what I mean? With the um, articulated icons, we got the traditional samurai and ninjas and stuff. But this guy looks like, almost like Budo from G.I. Joe. He's got that kind of shtick, that kind of feel to him. You can easily put him in your Motu setups. You can easily put him in your more futuristic stuff. He's akin, his design is akin to the uh, Hayabusa armor in... Um, Halo, I want to say Halo 3, um, it's just, you know, a tactical suit with samurai uh, uh, flair to it, you know? He looks like he could actually just be right alongside the cowboy or the, uh, I mean, they all could work together, but he's ta he seems more on the tactical side, like you could hang out with your ranger or your cowboy, and, uh, you know, with the accessories, you could do all kinds of things to tweak him to make him kind of fit in where you want him to fit in, but, I mean, shit, for some of you guys who are Joe uh, classified collectors, this guy could be a good uh, substitute for Budo if you really love Budo that much, you know what I mean? It's a dope figure, though. Dope design. I love it. The Plains Warrior. 
I like to look at him as like a futuristic Zulu. I love his design. I love his weaponry. He's just slick. He's like your stealth op. And I think he fits in perfectly with like Mo2 stuff, with your Marvel Legends. You could even add him if you want to the uh, uh, Legions of Wakanda. Uh, a lot of people have made, uh, you know, mention of the fact that it reminds them of Black Panther, mainly because he's got ear-like things on the tops of his, um, of his helmet. But it doesn't matter. He fits in well with just about whatever, you know. Um, the the whole you know tribal kind of theme to him, like future tribal old school warrior type deal. It works super well. Um, I was impressed. It, it kind of reminds me of the way that, uh, or it brought me back to how amazed I was when I saw Imaginex had a Zulu in their. Uh, you know, line of ancient warriors and such. So, um, yeah, I'm geeked about this. And I'm loving the way that it's working. I'm loving the whole, like, look and feel of the guy. I mean, I think you guys will have a lot of fun with him. You know, army building him or just making him his own, you know, whatever. <laughs> he could actually fit in real well with the lightning collection. Yeah, Plains Warriors, dope. Spartan. Now, the Spartan is the favorite. Um, it seems like everybody's like, yo, futuristic Leonidas, let's get it. You know what I mean? Everybody wants one. So um, he's my favorite of the designs next to the Cowboy. The Cowboy is more sublime. This guy's more bombastic and more, you know, more like hard future. I think, you know, going forward, maybe we should look into making him like the mascot of the, uh, of the line. But um, you can see that, you know, the thought was here. And it's dope because the things I envisioned while drawing my picture of him uh, back when he was only like a prototype and there were, there were sketches and all that stuff and there were pieces, I saw him in pieces, seeing it fully realized is just fucking amazing. But um, he's dope. He's dope. I can picture the whole Leonidas shtick. It's like it's, he's just ready to go. He's waiting for it, waiting to kick people off of your desk. You know what I mean? Kick other whack figures off the fucking, uh, off your shelf. And I can already see all the, uh, army builders just waiting, you know, frothing at the mouth to army build this guy. And we've got some options waiting for you guys so that you can army build, you know, some Spartans to back up Leonidas. So, um, yeah, the Spartan is, uh, straight up a winner. I can't wait to take a look at him in person. Um... That's going to be fun. I can't wait for all of them in person, but I can't wait to take a look at him in person. Last but not least is the Ranger. The Ranger is like the leader character. You know what I mean? That's who he, what he hits me as the leader. Um, this guy is just a very straightforward soldier, like a futuristic soldier, just like the name implies. Um, very much slim down. He could fit in your halo displays or he could fit alongside your Joes in the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Joe classified line. Or you very much could just have him be part of the uh, action force that's coming up, you know, or do your own thing and have him be in the far, far future doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It's, it, I mean, the options are all there for you to do whatever you want, but design wise, this guy is pretty nice it's it's cool that he's a kind of straightforward more on the simplistic side he doesn't have like a complex suit of armor so his articulation and everything is not uh hindered by anything and uh that face i, I gotta ask landon if he made that to look like him because that's what i that's the the vibe i get from this guy it looks like landon but uh he's dope and I like the fact that, you know, you've got your rifle, you've got your pistols, you've got your uh, assault rifle. So if you do decide to army build, you have lots of options. Um, this guy is definitely going to be one of those ones that I think if you don't get him now, you might want to try to get him when uh, you get the opportunity from the other outlets that he'll be offered at. Well, that all of these guys will be offered at. All right, 
So we are taking a look at something special. This is the Ranger. Uh, we, I was lucky to get a chance to take a look at these. This is the prototype. So you can see it's not even in the, the new pack or the final packaging or anything. This is just to keep it all uh, clean and safe so that when we send it to uh, you know China for the factory, Essentially, they have an idea of what the colors are supposed to look like and they can see the whole thing. Now, this is not the final figure. This is a prototype, a paint master. So, you know, the details are painted in, but things like, for instance, the head, it's not finished. It's not like the, the, the articulation is not final. So you can see all the paint and you see how nice all that looks. Five o'clock shadow looks really dope. But this is not the final figure. So the body of the figure is pretty wobbly and such because, you know, that's how they come out. This is just to get an idea of what the final is going to look like. But as he stands, let me let me put the armor on him so that you can get an idea of what he looks like. Put the armor on. i got to be careful because we don't want to break anything. He's already got a strap that's cracked. This is made of resin. So it's not made of the more pliable materials that the final figures will be made out of. So it's a little bit more on the brittle side, a little harder. So I'm gonna try and be extremely careful with this guy. So stand him up right here. I'm gonna try to keep things, because I wanna do a quick comparison. See if I can get him to stand up and look cool. Make him look tough. See, this is the stuff that like more toy um, reviewers need to handle because if you love this shit, you love it from every angle. So you want to have a, you know what I'll do actually to be safe? Let's use one of these stands. That'll be even better. That way I can move him back and forth and we don't have to worry. I can slide him back and forth. You don't have to worry about him falling. There we go. See, Landon, I told you. I told you I would do this. I, I, we, we were talking about good ways to show people what you're going to end up getting with this figure. So let's, uh, there you go. I'm going to put him next to Gunslinger Spawn, who I just got the other day. And I may have to pull back a little bit more just so you can see better. So that's your McFarlane toy. I'll put him next to... The new Motu uh, Masterverse figures. I got He-Man a little while ago. We were talking about him too. Um, and let's bring, of course, we got to bring a Marvel Legends of some sort. We always have to bring a Marvel Legend into this. So let's bring uh, Endgame Cap into the mix. He's a good military looking figure. Even though he's a superhero, he's got very military styling or very goodness he's got military styling on his costume you know what i mean like and you can tell even though uh, our figure is on a stand he's bigger than a marvel legend you know not bigger than your mcfarlane figures because those are clear clearly the biggest guys on the you know in in the game and let's throw in something goofy how about peely that's from Jazzwares Fortnite. So as you can see, he scales well with the guys. You know what I mean? Fit in really well. Um, what I want to do next is I want to grab a uh, classified. So give me a second. All right. So here he is next to a couple classifieds figures. Um, I like this this size. You know what I mean? You can tell that. Our guys are taller than the Hasbro figures. You know, that's just the way it is. So I figured I'd get these guys in because you can see they have a more military styling. So if you did want the, him to be like a heavy gunner or something like that, you could do that because he's a big dude. It fits, you know what I'm saying? But you can see color-wise, he matches the kind of green that you see on a lot of these Joes. More modern, olive drab. So, you know, you have options, you know, and these guys can kind of uh, add to those options. Here is how he scales with ZD Toys uh, Mark V, the NECA Terminator Genesis uh, Pops figure. Well, it's not Pops, it's the T-800. And then the uh, 
It's a little bit of a, you know what I'm talking about, ODC. This is uh, Bulletproof from Cops. You do too, Landon. And then here's uh, Mezco's Punisher. So, uh, yeah, you get a good idea of where he scales. He's on the big side. You know, he fits closer to your 7-inch figures than, you know, your 5.5-inch or your 6-inch figures. And they even actually kind of scale pretty good. It's not too bad. So, you know, it's a world. You have all different types of sizes, shapes. They fit in. It looks good. Okay, now that we got the comparisons out of the way, let's talk about the articulation that we do have. Ball-jointed head and neck. You can see that the there's a hinge joint. I'll show you from behind. There's a hinge joint right there at the base of the head. So it's much like Marvel Legends, but what we what we did differently from Marvel Legends is that the base of the neck is on a uh, like a ball joint. So you'll get you know that full range of motion once we have that all finished. Um, come on, hold them up. My stand. These ZD toy stands are kind of hit or miss. Some of them are amazing. Others are kind of meh. So we'll try to work with this as best as we can. Um, the arms, it, the construction is almost identical to what you get with Marvel Legends. I will bring Cap out so you can see what I'm talking about. You see how there is the double jointed elbow. You can see it right there. You can also see that, you know, the joints are pretty well covered up. The pins are kind of small. I mean, they're about the same size as the Marvel Legends pins. So, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. One thing that we did way better, and I'm impressed, super impressed with this, because, you know, I've, I've been collecting import figures for quite some time. It's the, uh, the butterfly joint. Let me get up close on that. This butterfly joint actually works. Look at that. Look at that. And I want you to pay attention to that because we talk. I've talked about this on my channel before. That's range of motion. That's all the way going back. And then so say he had a gun in his hand and you wanted to get him closer to it, you could, uh, you could actually do that. You want him to hold his gun with both hands, you can, you can do that easier. You can see that that affords the arms to get closer. Now, I'm sure once we're done in the proper finished uh, ABS, it'll give more so you can actually force it a little bit more because you know people in the community have hammer hands. So you have to, you know, with this, I can't, I can't really go as far as crazy as I want to to show you, but you can kind of get an idea for it. You've got your swivel at the, your bicep swivel up top here. Like I said, double jointed elbow, and then you have a wrist swivel here as well. I'm not going to interchange any of the hands. I will show you the hands separately. Um, you've got a ball joint. Let me move this out the way. We'll put this arm far back like that. You've got a ball joint at the diaphragm right up here, like a diaphragm joint, and you've got a ball joint at the bottom. So you have a lot of motion that you can get with that, you know. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know I'm off to the side, but I want to be close up. You know what? We'll just move the stand out the way. So you can see that. Move to the side. It's pretty dope. A lot of move back. A lot of bend forward. You'll probably get even more with the final. You still get your twists. And you'll get the twist doubly so, because you'll get the you can twist up here. And then you can twist down here at the waist. Legs go up about that much double jointed knees so you can see that right there two pins similar to marvel legends you've got the ankle rocker and the foot up i'm not even gonna mess with that as much but you can see based on the joint that's there and i'll zoom in some more for those who don't see it you got the same amount of of, of range as you often do with your marvel legends you see that very comparable so all in all man oh thigh swivel i forgot there was a thigh cut but it's hidden right up in here you can kind of see it better on this side see that thigh swivel and it's nice because the armor hides it so yeah man you're getting essentially you know a little bit better than what you get with your marvel legends 
with our articulation and I like it. And we're doing things all the time, working on ways to uh, improve it. Uh, I think it's Tyler that's working on the uh, articulation and he's doing all kinds of cool stuff. And you'll see that going forward if we are able to continue doing this because, I mean, you know, that is the goal is to do this long term. Let you guys see what we're coming up with. Let's take a look at some of the accessories. Well, the accessories in general. Because we've talked about the figure itself. These shoulder pads. I'll show you what those look like on the figure. And I can't switch out the head because the... Uh... So you see the shoulder pads now. Looks good. This is the head. The alternate head, the helmeted head. It's pretty dope. Very hardcore helmet. It's got a Doom Guy vibe to it. I love it. And I missed out on the Doom Guy, so hey, he could take the place of the Doom Guy for me. Anyway, let's take a look at these weapons. Alright. So this is the combat knife very nice look at the ridges right there it's beautiful man bludgeon someone with this the flat side and then just do your shanking with the other the other parts the points you know nice paint weathered effect handle even looks cool it's quality stuff quality stuff um here is the assault rifle I like this again it's very doomish or uh starship troopers ish I like it I like it a lot it is beautiful the clip in the back it almost looks like the rifle that it's like a better version of the rifle that beachhead came with for the classified line um Here's the pistol. I love it. Reminds me of a SIG, like a futuristic SIG Desert Eagle hybrid. Those ridges underneath. Kind of, I think we should do one where we have the, um, like the ridges on the, you know, kind of like the hammer, uh, the hammerhead type deal going around on around the uh, barrel. So you could also bludgeon folks while you're fighting with it, you know, or put some underslung knives or something like that but i like it I like it a lot very simple very futuristic very straightforward looks great even got a barrel like the the opening for the bat you know where the bullets are kind of going to come out or lasers or whatever are going to leave the gun it's beautiful it's beautiful and i'm not just saying this because i'm involved because you know the whole point is to make stuff that we would buy you know and I do that with my art and I do that with, you know, we're doing that with these figures, you know, sniper rifle. This thing is beautiful. It's just futuristic enough to work, but it's very PSG one, uh, you know, or even very Dragonov esque. And I love it. Crazy ass rifle barrel. That suppressor or, uh, yeah, it looks more like a suppressor. Or maybe it's just the end of the barrel, like the anti-material rifles. Uh, but anyway, looks great. So nicely detailed. And the paint job, we're going to hopefully keep the same kind of paint job, you know. Um, hopefully not too much will be lost in the mass production process. And then let's look at his hands, because, you know... Weapons are all well and good, but you need hands. Oh, there's a uh, holster for the pistol. So this is the holster. Here's a strap that goes with it. It just connects at the back right there. And it would, you know, wrap around the leg. And the gun fits in like so. Pretty sure, yeah, there we go. Or am I doing it the wrong way? I think I was doing it the wrong way. Yep. 
There you go. Looks really good. It's like the quick draw holsters that they have these days in the military. Very nice stuff. My homeboy Zach would get a kick out of these. Um. So yeah, that's the gun and the holster. It's a very nice snug fit. Uh, easy to work with though. It's not too difficult because you know sometimes holsters are weird like that. I'm talking to you, Joy Toy. Sometimes the holsters are kind of uh, either they're too big and the gun is swimming in that shit, or they're too tight and uh, it's it's really hard to get the gun out once you get it in. So here are your gun hands. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to put them down here on the ground, and then we're going to look at them that way. That way you can see all of them at the same time. So here are our hands. Gun hands. Very nice detailing on them. Of course. Sorry about that. Very nice detailing on the gun hands. See that? It's like the futuristic version of Nomex gloves. Very awesome. Here's your knife your other knife hand we have two knife hands here's one of the knife hands holding the knife sorry about that looks really good and then here is the extra hand to hold the underside of your rifle or your shotgun i think that rifle that i what i called the rifle before this one is actually a shotgun because there's the pump towards the front you see that but that hand I just showed you is opened to support whatever you know weapon you're holding rifle or so so it's a wider grip because you know all those barrels and the underside of the barrels are always wider so you know it will facilitate all that so that was a, a nice little look at the uh, the Ranger it's an early look, so, you know, forgive all the rough edges, but at least you're getting to see it before it hits production. You're getting to see behind the scenes stuff and see what's really going on. I mean, I sound reserved, but I'm like squealing on the inside, like like just maniacal laughter because I am doing something that, you know, I was dreaming about doing this when I was a little kid. Me and Landon talked about this kind of stuff for hours because this is kind of like one of the things that like when you get into comics... The best part of comics is having the figures that go along with them sometimes because then you can create your outcomes from the battles that you've just read. And that's so much fun. But to do it with a, a, an IP that doesn't exist until now, that's amazing. It's so much fun to do and it's amazing to be a part of this, you know? I mean, obviously, this is Landon's vision, but you can see so much of the things that we all love it's, it's right here. You know what I mean? It's right here in this. So hopefully, you know, you guys will enjoy these. We will, uh, you know, hit our goals and be able to make more of these things and branch out and do, you know, uh, even more uh, elaborate stuff, you know, and kind of plug in the holes that we have in our collection for, you know, more sci-fi futuristic things or more medieval things. Who knows? The sky is the limit. Um, but uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that look at this behind the scenes look at the uh, the Ranger. So the bottom line, the bottom line is really simple. Um, we already got Marvel Legends, tons of them, tons of MCU stuff. We've got tons of DC stuff now with um, uh, McFarlane handling that, and he's knocking it out of the park. Um, we need something else, you know? It can't all just be that stuff, and we've had that stuff for years and years and years and years. It's time for some other avenues to enter the arena, and we have provided one. For years, you've heard me talk about things that we need to see we need new ideas, new IPs, new styles of figures and such, and now you're being presented with one. So, you know, if you're looking for something new, you want to give something else a try, this is right up your alley. Now, it's part of the, 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 part of the, the charm of all this is the fact that 
We are not some giant corporation. We're just guys who like figures that want to see something else out there. And we're throwing our hat in the ring to get that, to make that a reality. So um, we are also on Kickstarter, of course. If you didn't know, I will have the link in the description. Currently, as of this recording, we have about 20 days to go. Uh, 19 if this came out a day you know, after I recorded all this. Um, we need all the eyes, all the you know backers that we can get to make this a reality, and you know it'll be worth it because we've got a lot of cool shit down the pipeline, you know, in mind for for what we would like to present to the world. You know, lots of cool ideas, lots of cool designs, just lots of cool shit because you know, for a long time we've listened to you know the big guys tell us, oh, what you want can't be done. Well, here we are, and together, you like us with the ideas and with the, you know, the concepts, and you guys backing us, we can provide the new ideas, you know what I mean? The new takes, the characters that you're not seeing from the big guys, you know? We can fill that gap. So that's what we're planning on doing. Um, if you don't back anything else ever in the history of my channel, in the history of you know, toy reviewers that are doing stuff, this would be the one to back. Oof, that's, that's been a lot. So yeah, that's my look at the futuristic combat soldiers. And uh, yeah, that is it for me. You guys have been great. Peace outside.